we are live and on the air. Uh, this is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and everybody, welcome to Friday Morning Conversations. Uh, good to see our board member, David Jacobs, joining us this morning. Uh, Dr. Faye is joining us this morning, and uh, already there's uh, a lot of people joining in who uh, aren't in the chat room, and that's okay. You don't have to be, but uh, good to see everybody joining us this morning. Uh, today, my guest is Apostle Daniel Williams. Um, good morning, my brother. How are you? I'm wonderful. Glad to be with you. And listen, everybody, this is that time of the morning where some of you are probably just getting around. If you're like us, we work late nights in ministry. We're up late in the evening. And uh, so you might be getting your, your first cup of coffee um, uh, or um, uh, get your, your Bible or a notepad uh, or, or just watch and, and receive from what's going on. Uh, good to see Colleen joining us this morning. And... Um, other people that are chiming in here, uh, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Well, uh, Apostle, uh, tell our, uh, since this is your first time on um, uh, Friday Morning Conversations, uh, just tell our audience uh, where you're from and, and just a little bit about your ministry before we get into this today. Hallelujah. Well, I'm, I'm from Brainerd, Minnesota. We're about 120 miles north of Minneapolis, and 110 miles, uh, I guess you'd say, south of Duluth. And uh, we're fixing to get snowed on. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But no, the, the Lord, um, he pulled me out of some things in, uh, from my past and um, made himself real to me uh, back in 1982. And then he uh, he called me to preach, and um, it's just uh, it's been a whirlwind since then. Um, the revelation that I had then that the Lord revealed uh, has vastly changed, and um, I, I just suggest to anybody that be willing to let God change you, because yeah. God God isn't going to change, and He wants us to know what that what he knows already about us. And um, that's what I'm endeavoring to do now is to know more about what he knows about me so that I can become everything that he's called me to be. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, Colleen says that it's cold in North Texas and Texas is just below Missouri. And I just found out this morning that Minnesota is two states above Missouri. Of course, we're at the very bottom of the state. Um, and we are um, it, uh, actually at the, the uh, uh, four state uh, corner of Arizona, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. Joplin's right in the corner there. Good to see uh, a, a, a professor that's uh, going to be starting in November, uh, Pastor Lynn Garner, joining us this morning. Uh, so uh, we're talking about developing the mind of Christ within you. And in this lesson and, and the next three weeks, we're looking at the mind that was in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. We're going to read that scripture here in just a moment. But let that mind be in you, uh, which must be brought to the forefront of our awareness or our understanding. We know it's there. And as a matter of fact, when the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation, in that symbolic book, uh, about how that there's earthquakes and lightnings and thunders. And that's so that all the carnality, the carnal thinking will crumble and fall to the ground. And then the mind of Christ emerges from within and rises to the forefront. And that's kind of what we're after in these sessions. So, Apostle, let me start off by reading Philippians 2, verses 5 through 9. I'm reading from the New King James, which is very similar to the King James, and says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not and he was God but he came in the appearance of man he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made of himself no reputation taking on the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even to the death of the cross Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name above uh, which is above every name. 
Now, we know that the word name, uh, see, I, I was thinking this morning about maybe Sunday teaching on this, and maybe I'll just say it now, uh, that we think that to say in the name of Jesus is this magic fix. If I just say the name of Jesus after everything, that fixes everything. But we know the word name actually is not translated name like we would use in our uh, English uh, 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 surroundings. It actually means the character or the nature of God. So really he's saying to do it like the character of Jesus would do it. Remember when Jesus knelt and prayed and said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. And then he cried, Lazarus, come forth. That's a real model prayer right there. Uh, but how do we come from... And I know you've made a lot of transition in this yourself, but how do we come from knowing once we know the mind of Christ is in us, the mind of God is in us, but we haven't really experienced uh, a lot of the fullness of that mind, the content of that mind. How does that happen? How, what's the transition for people? Well, I believe <clears throat> probably number one thing for me that, that really helped me move in that direction was uh, 2 Peter 3, 8, which says that we are to grow in grace mm. and in the knowledge of the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I, I believe what, what I've experienced, the more I've developed in the grace of God, uh, which, of course, is his divine influence upon my heart, and the reflection in my life, the more I develop that, the more I, uh, my mind began to cooperate and change. And uh, then, of course, I come across that scripture that you just read, and I see that he says, hey, you're supposed to have my mind. You're supposed to be like me because I created you that way. And uh, it, in uh, 1 Corinthians six seventeen, he said, he that is joined, and we are joined, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So the growing in grace and growing in knowledge, and that's not just information, that's in experiencing him in your life and allowing him to change you from the inside out. And that's how it's been happening with me. Amen. And, and now let, let me just say that I have a, a, a friend, Dr. Roy Richmond, who actually uh, is a translator. Uh, he actually tra tra uh, translates scripture. I, I, I don't really translate. I, I guess I could probably take every word and, and interpret what it's really saying. But what I do is scripture interpretation. So that's kind of like paraphrasing. And the way I think he would say that uh, when he says, uh, that uh, we are one mind, that, that because we are one with him, that we're one spirit, because we are one, because we're united, in union. And when we go back to Genesis and we think about creation, now, I have uh, recently done a course called The Theology of Creation that I wrote, and I looked at Genesis chapter 1 as the explanation of what happened in pre-creation. And so what I saw in Scripture was how that God took mankind and God uh, created him from himself. But mankind wasn't separated from himself. Mankind was united with him from the very moment. Uh, there are scriptures that give us clues to the truth about creation. Uh, and, and we read in scripture where that God spoke, uh, which is our English word we use for chose. He chose us, but he spoke us into being. And then he joined us to himself immediately because he loved us the moment he saw us. And, and so uh, it's important that we understand how unified, how joined we are with him. So if we're joined with the Lord like this and we're learning to see through his eyes, think through his mind, then that would be a great indicator of what you're talking about, that we have his mind in us. But when it comes to understanding his mind, there really are a lot of things that people can do, like reading the scriptures, studying the scriptures. Um, I define prayer as communication between two people in love so we can communicate with the father and allow him to communicate with us and we have to let we have to allow that mind that was in christ jesus to also come to the forefront or manifest in us and i think that's so important 
Uh, do you think it's possible that one of the ways we do this is is by taking on his mind in this? He said that he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. When you think about, because uh, I have a, a, a professor that was on my show one time, not too long ago, Dr. Glenn Hartline, and he said, Holy Spirit told him that intimacy requires equality. Now, when you think about the husband-wife relationship, and really any relationship, uh, if you treat someone like they're your lesser, then you become the dominant person. And God is not dominant. God does not dominate. He wants relationship. So the most wholesome relationship comes out of recognizing your partner as your equal. God does the same thing. So I wonder just if to let his mind arise to the surface in us, if this really is a key here, that to consider it not robbery to be equal with God. How do you feel about that? Absolutely. I mean, in in Genesis, as you you teach this a lot, and um, I do now uh, quite a bit more than I used to, he created us in his very likeness, not in some other kind of, you know, some other kind of a smokescreen type thinking that I've heard from others, but he created us to be just like him. He didn't create us to be, and yet the Bible says we are similar, but at the, even though we have similarities, we are also just like him. We came from him. And the law of Genesis, I, this is how I think of it, is that we are born of the very seed of God. And uh, every seed produces after its own kind. And uh, the seed that we are born of is not a corruptible seed that takes on variations of the original it is a, a, an exact re replica of the original because it is not influenced by environment or by the things that we experience. It is identical to him. And we read in Ephesians where he says that we are to imitate him as his beloved children. <laughs> well, you, 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 it's easy to do because we, we are developing are redeveloping, coming back to our, our the original plan that God had designed. Uh, yeah. It's easy to 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 adopt that that kind of thinking and then see yourself uh, as one that has uh, the the right as an heir of the Father to enjoy a pure, full relationship with Him and not just observe Him from the outside, like religion says. I'm just trying to get good enough to get a hold of God. You know, if I just pray enough and hurt myself long enough, you know, just maybe we can get God's attention. But I know, I absolutely, without a doubt, know that I have my Father's full attention 100% of the time. Every right. time I open my mouth, He says, that's my son. <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. And, you know, while you were talking there, uh, I was thinking about what David said, and I refer to this a lot. David said in Psalm 8, he, he reminded God, he said, he said, who is man that you're mindful of him? And, and of course, I, I'll just paraphrase this. He said, you've crowned him with glory and honor and etc." And he said, you made him a little lower than the angels. Now, we know that since our Bibles were translated, were not originally written in English. The word angels really is the wrong word because even in the book of Revelation, the word angels actually is translated messengers, which speaks of of, of the, the those uh, spirit beings in the unseen realm, uh, the great cloud of witnesses, and so on. Uh, but but one of the things I noticed was as David said, you've made him a little lower than the angels. That's really the Hebrew word Elohim. <laughs> And we've defined that as Elohim, and and the word lower actually is just so insignificant that you really can't tell a difference. Uh, but but the thing about Elohim is it actually comes from 
it's a, a root word that really would say that we were made as gods in the ordinary sense or in the specific sense. Uh, he literally made us as gods. He, he, it's a lowercase g in, in the, the Strong's Concordance, which was written in 1890, I believe. Uh, but the thing is, to think about that David's amazed God, you made these people, and they're not much different than you. And a way I define that is he is the creator. We are the created. But he's joined us to himself. And that joining to himself would really preface the same as. And that's yeah. what God did. That's how much he thinks of his creation. Isn't it amazing, Apostle, that that creation thinks so little of themselves much of the time, yet God thinks so much of, it, of his creation to make us identical to himself. Yes. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but That's the it. spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. One of the differences I see that we are like him, and he said we are equal, we're, we're like him, uh, we have that mind in us, but the, one of the differences is, is, is that we call him Father. And therefore, that puts our position, like you would say, maybe just, just a little, little bit lower, but yet not, because it's in honor and reverence to him as our Father. Yeah. And uh, and that's how we that's how I see that Abba uh, Father, Daddy Daddy, and what do we do? I mean, if you have a, had a good earthly father represent uh, re that represented uh, the things of God, what did you do with him when you came into the house? Yes, you could go into the kitchen, you could take what you want, but you you there was a reverence, there was a respect. For him, because he was the father of that family. Well, mm -hmm. God is the father of his whole family. Amen. Amen. Now, another layer to add on to this is that uh, when he said that he did not think it was robbery to be equal with God, if we adopt that uh, as to a word about ourselves, because this was not Jesus talking. This was uh, the Apostle Paul teaching to the uh, church at Philippi. And as he makes this statement, and he's just letting them know, you know, you need to arise and let awaken to the mind that, that was in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Uh, this actually, this statement could be translated to say something to be held on to, to be equal, as in to hold on to the idea that God made you equal to himself. So you may not be God, but you were made just like him in mind, in nature, and in character. And, and that's just how much we are like our father. Um, it's so amazing that we have had this earthly concept of this physical Jesus for all of our lives that we read in the Bible, we got accustomed to, we heard about in Sunday school, and we've been programmed, let's say, all of our lives to think about this earthly Jesus without ever really going to the point of conception where he was birthed from his mother Mary and with no biological father, no biological father. Mother Mary was overshadowed by Holy Spirit. And think about this. Jesus was fully God, fully spirit. And he manifested into this earth realm, just like we did, through the birthing canal of his mother. Nothing changed about who he was. He just took on an earthly identity for the sake of how the senses work in this realm, how people's minds work in this realm. And so I think it's so phenomenal that you've got about 4,000 years of the Old Testament prior to Jesus. You've got um, uh, no telling how long the garden uh, was in, in in existence in terms of Adam and Eve in that scenario. And so all these years, mankind goes through from Genesis chapter 2 to about Revelation 20, man goes through this messed up concept of God and of himself. And here comes Jesus, this man, and he walks in the earth just for 33 uh, and a half years, and he shows us 
how to be like God. He shows us how to act. That's why he was so persecuted. Because religion will persecute you if you come up with statements like we're making this morning and say, you're just like your father. You were created just like God. Well, the same thing happened to Jesus. But yet he manifested. Him. And, and you know what, Apostle? It wasn't that he went around bragging about being like God. It was that he was, he, people got a revelation just like Peter. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. It takes a revelation to know who it is that lives in you. And the reason why you're supposed to imitate the one that's in you because you're just like him. Amen. Absolutely. I'm going to read um, one verse. I have some thoughts probably to piggyback what you said, but um, Ephesians 4.23. Mm -hmm. I really, I really love this verse because he says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that's the only part of that verse I, I wrote down and used. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that means to renovate or reform. And it also means reversal. And then I got this little phrase as I was thinking about it. Reversal is to come back to the Father's original plan. Come on. That, come back to the Father's. That's what he was trying to teach him. He says here. Come back to the Father's original plan and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In other words, let your carnal thinking and the, that way of thinking become spiritual thinking. Mm -hmm. God is a spirit. And the truth of the matter is we are spirit. We just clothed yes. in flesh. The, Jesus was spirit. And he became flesh and dwelt among us. We were spirit with the Father before we were formed and became flesh. And he said that let the word become flesh. In other words, let the word be quickened within your whole being. And then this, this physical body, literally by, by presenting the word and exercising the word in our lives, our senses begin to line up. And mm -hmm. we begin to think like God in had or intended us to do from the very beginning. So he says, right. hey, come back. He said, I like this reversal. So literally to, to catch up with what God has for us for our future, we've got to go. We got to have a reversal in our thinking and go back to the original thing that 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 we were literally called ordained before we were even born for a god given purpose now that's hard for a lot of people to think because we all we all been taught that performance is what god wants but no right. performance is what happens because we we receive him and we know him and his seed is within us and we're one with him. Therefore, the performance and the fruit just happens naturally because it comes out of who you are, just like it came out of the father. He, he, it, was, it came out of him and it can come out of us. We are the, uh, what is it? Hebrews 12. Uh, I don't know the exact verse right now, but he says, we are the spirits of just men, pure, innocent, and holy. Just men made perfect. Yeah. Totally complete. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Um, I was thinking something that Nicodemus uh, understood. Uh, Nicodemus being uh, not only a Jew, as Jesus was, but Nicodemus also being a member of the Sanhedrin Council, uh, there somewhere in history talks about how Nicodemus probably even had a, a teaching ministry, a traveling ministry. Of course, Nicodemus was a promoter of the law. He was also a Pharisee, uh, and the Pharisees were those who persecuted Jesus. He came to Jesus by night, and he says to Jesus, we know that you came from God. So meaning that the Sanhedrin councils already discussed this and, and Jesus begins to speak to him. Now, 
think about this. All of our lives, we had this term born again uh, in us. And, and when we came into the revelation of who we've always been, what is the purpose of coming into this earth realm and now becoming born again if we've already been created just like God? Well, here was the thing. Uh, just to cut, uh, cut it short, because I just taught on this uh, yesterday in my associate class, um, that the term born again actually means to be regenerated to the original. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and what it's talking about, it, being born again doesn't mean to get a, a new spirit. You know, we used to teach that your human spirit gets born, but that's not true because your spirit is your spirit and never changes. But what he's talking about is a new mind, uh, changing the way you think. So you're regenerated in your thinking, uh, the word again to mean above, from above, but it really means to the original. So what God has really tried to do from the very beginning of, of, of Jesus being in the earth was to try to interject into mankind that, look, you've been thinking about this the wrong way. You've been thinking that I'm God and you're the that you're my creation, but you're you're really nothing, and you really can't come to me and know me until you do pray all these prayers and confess all your sins and go through all the motions, which none of that was true, and and so Jesus and and, and here's the thing, if you watch really really close it, it, with the Greek language, Nicodemus actually understood Jesus. He actually understood that it was his mind that had, because remember what G Nicodemus' response was, how can a man enter back into his mother's womb and be born all over again? He, he was confused about it, but by the time Jesus was done, Nicodemus understood because this was something they actually understood in their, their, their Hebrew culture, even though they might have had different terminology. So that's still the same thing. Think about this. The Bible said that Jesus humbled himself. You know that that really should read that he emptied himself, not humbled, but but it should read that he. So I asked the question: What did Jesus humble himself of, or empty himself of? He emptied himself into you, so you would be like him. I think that's amazing. Amen. Amen. I, I uh, you talking like that reminded me of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, uh, you know, the disciples fell asleep. He went out to pray, and they fell asleep. Uh, in two different gospel accounts, he said, mm -hmm. the spirit is willing, and the spirit is ready, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. See, a spirit, because we are spirit, your spirit doesn't have a problem with believing God or you know, even relating to him because your spirit is, it came from him. It's part of who he is, part of what he's poured into us. That is who we are. But he said, your flesh is weak. And that's where the understanding and the way we perceive ourselves to be. And David said in Psalms 23, 7, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right. No wonder no wonder it's so important to develop the mind of Christ because that that is that is for this natural world we live in. If we were just spirit, we wouldn't have to have that cuz we would know him as he knows us. But because we have we have been formed and we have this this physic this flesh and through the time through the ages and how things have transpired and, and transitions in people's lives and we lost that he says i want to uh, i want you to go through a reversal and come back to your original and then the word that uh, that uh, what had happened in the beginning you are spirit is being released in the earth reformed with the mind of christ so that so that the everything he said thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which is in the spiritual realm and in the natural. Right. We're coming right. into a place, uh, Bishop, where the, the spiritual and the natural is going to, they're going to just come together. And that, of course, is when, when uh, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we'll all be changed. And death, that'll be swallowed up. It'll be total victory. The grave will completely lose its sting. 
and we we will that stuff will just disappear because that is what he's that's what he wants us to do is to let the word of God come alive and work within us so that the mind of Christ is fully developed our awareness of who we are uh, is totally formed in us when that totally happens there's going to be an immediate change that's going <laughs> to it's going to be powerful i'm looking for that time but well i'm looking for that to to manifest the sons of god manifest in fully in the earth this is the message i'm telling people that we have this mind of christ that we are united with him we are one with him we can never be separated from him and we are yeah. developing developing like the polaroid camera the old pictures they used to take it, you'd take a picture and there was nothing on it but you'd set the picture on the table and come back and look at it a few minutes later and there it was well that's what's happening everything to produce the picture is already there and the picture is going to come forth suddenly hallelujah yeah amen you, you know uh and that's the whole thing here is that everything that was finished everything that was done um of course one of the greatest things that was finished it is a word that is uh represents me or myself so really it refers to ego is finished um uh, we've come to an end whether we realize it or not uh, that's the state of mankind who don't realize that all of our ego all of our self-effort has come to an end the law has come to an end the need to perform has come to an end and we now can switch over and operate in that mind that was in christ jesus and i was teaching uh wednesday um from revelation 17 8 um and it talks about the wild beast you once uh, you saw once uh, you once what that was once was uh now is not and is destined to ascend out of the deep and go to destruction and all those who do not have their name written in the book of life was from the foundation of the world will be utterly astonished doesn't say destroyed but astonished uh, they will see the wild beast because he uh, once was, now is not, but is about to arise. Now, while that sounds a bit confusing, first of all, uh, the, the book of life actually is mistranslated. It should be interpreted as the book of the Lamb's life because that's the book that's in us. That's the book that John ate when the angel said or the messenger said, eat, take the book and eat it. It will be sweet to your mouth, but it will be bitter to your stomach. Uh, the, the, and it refers to your mind. The word actually, it sounds good. It feels good. It sounds like a grand revelation when it's honey to your lips. But when it goes into your mind, it begins to first be bitter because the word, the revelation of truth requires change. And so you begin to, you begin to take that bitterness at first does change and does evolve into peace because it is truth and truth makes you free. And the thing about this wild beast, this wild beast is not a beast. The beast here uh, can represent not only the, the, the seven beasts, the seven rulers of the Roman Empire at that time, or the beast can also represent the untamed uh, soul, the unrenewed part of your soul. And what he's saying is, is that it once was and, and no longer is, but it's going to rise again. What happens is, is all of that is being torn loose from within you and will come out one last time and you will be completely free what you were talking about. Now, of course, this has already been done. OK, <laughs> we don't have the awareness of that, but it's already been done. And uh, John got that revelation. So he speaks this in a language that he received it in a symbolic language and then he conveys it to the hebrew people because even though the bible was basically first i think written in from they spoke aramaic then they spoke greek and then it was translated from there here's the thing about it um the hebrew language 22 chapters in the book of revelation 22 letters in the hebrew alphabet uh the 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 uh, the, the um 
uh, the alpha and omega is the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. Olive and the Tav is the first and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Every one of those letters have a musical value, have a, uh, a pictorial value, and have a uh, numeric value. And when we look at all of that, we see that John is speaking something that the Hebrew people got, but our English translators didn't understand it. So we got this mixed up, jumbled up mess that's kept us from actually realizing who we were created to be like. And I love that you brought up uh, Proverbs 23, 7, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. The Passion Translation says, for as he thinks within himself, so is he. What you think about yourself, how you view yourself. And so, Apostle, until we view ourselves in the same way, the exact same way the Father views us, uh, we will not rise to that place of complete freedom. We're all, we already have it. Uh, he made, made spirit made perfect. That's right. We're made perfect, but we just haven't come into an awareness of that truth. Amen. Uh, uh, that is that is absolutely true, and and that's why I'm rejoicing more and more because I'm, I'm finding people like yourself and others that are waking up and realizing there has to be more to what yeah. than, than what we knew has to be more than struggling and striving and trying to get good enough uh, for anything really major to happen in our lives. And, you know, the Bible's very clear about, it says we labor. Why do we do it? To enter into rest. All, yes. the, all the efforts that we've had and done and strive for, uh, the ultimate goal is to come to a place of rest where, where, where he has completed everything. And because he has, we are complete in him. And yes. uh, I, I'm, finding, I'm finding that is a great re reality. And, and James 1 verse 21 and I know you have a good definition of this, but I'm going to give you a couple of things that I found. It says that we're to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Mm -hmm. I, I, I found the word engrafted means fixed in position. Uh, it, and it also means a revel, uh, it means to a revelation of rest. That, I, I wrote it down. I couldn't see it. A fixed in position and to have a revelation of rest. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. So God wants us to fix our attention, focus on him, and allow that rest in a fixed position. It says that in him we live and move and have our being. He has placed his word regarding us, everything about us, above his name. Uh, and he said his, his promises for us are forever settled. The end from the beginning. He's already established everything at the very start. At the get-go, it was already established for, uh, for us to walk through life and come to this place of our origin of who we really are. Now, yes, we all we talk about it. We lost a lot of that. I remember when I was a child, I'm going to tell you something. It was so cool. I'd be as a child, and it, I'd talk to the Lord, and it's just like there was no, it wasn't any problem. Nobody told me I couldn't or I could. It's just that it was easy to do because I hadn't had my mind filled with a bunch of other garbage. And when the garbage rolled in, uh, it seemed to become harder and harder and harder. And then uh, in uh, 1982, when somebody talked to me about, hey, you know, you can receive uh, and have an experience with God, uh, baptism of Holy Spirit. I thought, well, what is that? I, I, yeah. I, knew, I knew Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but I didn't know. I didn't understand that part. But the man prayed for me. And something happened on the inside of me that woke me up 
then and since 82, it's been a journey, uh, even through more of the stuff being told by, well, buddy, you just going to have to, my God, you're going to have a hard time getting there. I mean, the Bible says scarcely will you be saved. You know, the unjust and the rest of them, they ain't got a chance, but scarcely would a righteous man be saved with difficulty. And I thought, Lord, why would you do something so good and then make it too hard for us to accomplish? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's so hard to do. But when you recognize that Christ, the hope, the expectation of glory lives in you and that he begun this work in you and he will perform all of it. He's the author. He is the finisher and you're, it's so simple. All you got to say is, "Lord, okay, I'm I yes, I am the clay. You are the potter, and you are you you're designing me, and you are fashioning me, Lord, to look in this earth, in the earth realm, just like you do in the spiritual realm. The word, the spiritual things shall be manifested." in the flesh like it was with Jesus. When you see me, you see the Father. When you see us, you see Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Uh, you, you know, it's such an important thing to for people who deal with discouragement and, and loneliness and fear to know that they're really just just hang tight because there really is uh, an, an end to this process. There really is a full man. Because here's the thing. Uh, when we talk about redemption, for example, I, I think it's the word redemption that actually uh, is translated the fullness of salvation. So that's an important word, the fullness of salvation. But but think about this also, that um, uh, there are so many words, like saved, uh, just means to rescue. Uh, I, you know, that we, we, we kind of get sidetracked, even with our study helps, like the Strong's Concordance. You have to think about when the first century occurred, uh, eight, eight uh, 1890, almost 19,000 years later, 1900 years later, uh, we have the Strong's Concordance. Now, James Strong's did a really good job trying to translate the Greek, but the problem and or Hebrew, but the problem is, is that the Greek language had been altered with. Gener it's like our English language today. Our our young, the young younger crowd has a, a different terminology than we had when we were young people. And, and so that was the same thing with the Greek language. So meanings were kind of altered. And so you get to James Strong's in 1890, and it's really hard. Sometimes the metaphors that he uses or the biblical usages that he uses are really more accurate than the, the regular definitions. But the point is, we can discover some things. So we've been rescued. How we've been rescued? We've been rescued in our thinking because there's no torment in the body without the mind and the spirit is never tormented. So the mind has been rescued by Jesus. And that's why Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, when he says to receive the uh, meek, with meekness the implanted word, uh, which is able to save your soul, is able to rescue your mind, um, uh, you rescue your thinking. Uh, this, uh, I, I agree with your, your definition there. Uh, the, the engrafted word, um, uh, emphutos is the Greek word, meaning inborn or that which you were created with, which is the implanted word. So we know that the word Really, the Bible says in John 1, 1, that the word was made flesh or that the word was God in the beginning. And so we know that the the the, the spirit of Christ is in us. The, the mind of Christ is in us. And it really does mean uh, that which you were created with. So we have this word that's engrafted within us, ingrained in us. But there's an area of our unrenewed soul that doesn't get it yet just to be plain about it 
And so we have to allow that to be engrafted. So I kind of view, if you look at the root system of trees, as they grow deeper and deeper and deeper, they become stronger and stronger and stronger. I kind of look at the renewed part of the soul as the roots of a tree going into the unrenewed and overtaking. Because, Apostle, I want to tell you, I'll tell you what I'm excited about is that the, the marriage, even though the book of Revelation is symbolic, it's not literal, but if you take the symbolisms of the marriage supper, the marriage between the lamb and the bride, I view our soul as the bride that's being adorned. Your spirit is wall-to-wall -wall lamb of God, Holy Spirit. And when your soul is fully renewed to the mind that was in Christ, there'll be a joining of spirit and soul, the marriage of the lamb and the bride, so that there is no more soul, no more carnality, no more wondering, when am I going to manifest like Jesus? When, I'm, when am I going to manifest like God in this earth? None of that will exist anymore. And I, for one, am looking for that. So that's the hope. That's the hope that we have. And the word, the Bible word for hope means a confident expectation of good. So we have to con constantly have confidence and be expecting the good to emerge in our lives. Amen. You know, I, 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 the Lord gave me a term, and I think it's really powerful. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Bible, we have it written, canonized, the scripture, uh -huh. but the Bible ain't done being written. Because his word coming through, the, when we're inspired and God, the Lord gives us a, something to give to somebody that is birthed from the spirit, that is the word too. But here's what, I, here's what he told me. Uh, for soul fractures. Now we know about broken bones. If a bone is broke, that is very easily easily detected because it's broke and you can see it's broke. But a soul fracture, fractures can be so fine that they're hard to even detect. Mm -hmm. Now, and I thought about, you know, you're driving down the road with a car and there's, there's rocks or whatever falls off a truck in front of you, these little stones, mm -hmm. and you get little fractures in your windshield when you're driving. Now, the windshield to begin with is clear and you can see everything just fine. But the more stones hit that windshield and the more fractures come across that windshield, it distorts your vision so you can't see clearly. Come on. And what, I've, what I see is there's been a lot of fracturing and, and soul fractures that have gone on and some of it so severe that no wonder people can't see anything clearly because you, 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 you see uh, like a cracked windshield, all these fractures, and the sun hits those fractures from one angle or another, that even makes it harder to see because yeah. you can, it, it really distorts your vision. So what the, what the Lord is doing is he's removing the fractures that have taken place in our life. So the windshield or our ability to see is cleared up again. And that's a powerful thing because I've went through a lot of soul fractures. You know, there's times where I thought, hey, you know, I can do it. But you'll, you'll hear somebody uh, that failed at the thing that you yeah. think that you're capable of doing, or you'll have somebody say, ah, oh, nah, you can't do it because... You know, you just don't have the money. You didn't grow up in the right home on the right side of the tracks. You got a you got a soul fracture going on there, because it's it's distorting God's plan for your life, and what you did see originally now is distorted by the stones that hit 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 your windshield, and you can't see it anymore uh, clearly. So he, he that's why he wants to he wants to restore. He wants our minds to, to be restored to its original so we can, when we're looking in that reflection of who we really are, we don't see ourselves after the flesh, after carnal, after somebody that yeah. cannot accomplish anything. We see ourselves after the spirit, just like our father. And when you got that going on, there is nothing 
that's impossible unto you because you know. Remember, Paul told Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 1, verse 12, he says, I know in whom I have believed. Believing is powerful, but knowing is even more powerful because knowing is experiencing him in a very personal way. Believing is saying, I really believe, but now, Lord, I actually really know what you said about me is, is absolutely true. The fractures in my soul are being mended. And now that old song, I can see clearly now the rain yeah. is gone. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Well, you yeah. see the, the light of God's words coming in and things are changing. So we do, like you said, we, we need to, we need to, we really need to hear the word taught and preached through those that are, that are getting this revelation so that it can be imparted. We need to have more of that. We need to be willing to be taught. Yeah. And then we need to also, we need to study the scripture and we need to study it through the mindset that we're trying to get across in these teachings today. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Amen. And, and I love that soul fractures. Uh, that's a <laughs> great way because, because to be able to see, uh, there are some other meanings to the word see, uh, to know or to yes. understand. And so sometimes we just don't understand the truth, which makes it hard to believe the truth. And, and believing is the process of embracing that end result of knowing. And you said that knowing is greater than believing. A lot of times what people are looking for is that feeling. Right. You know, James Brown, so I've got that feeling. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, 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 and see, see, knowing is greater than feeling. So you can feel stuff. And, you know, I go to uh, go get a, a worship or in prayer and those Holy Ghost goosebumps pop. Yeah. That's a feeling that and that's OK to have those. But the end result to your process, you're believing you're trying to get this is the knowing once you come to know, because Jesus said mm -hmm. you will know mm -hmm. truth and truth will make you free. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you that. Uh, I started preaching in 1970, well, first time in 1972. Uh, we got married early uh, January 1973 and became youth pastors. We were both raised in ministry. Um, uh, but by about 1982, uh, there was a change taking place. So 10 years of, of preaching and learning about preaching and learning about who I am, change began to take place. And what happened was is revelation began to come. Now, it wasn't the revelation I know today, but it was the process. So, so for about 35 years, I've been in a process. And I've been, a, a, and it's a constant upgrading. Uh, I, I say it this way, constant downloads of, of fresh information. Uh, just the stuff rises from out for, of within you uh, to your knowing, uh, to the place that you get it. And uh, sometimes in the process, this information becomes confusing or it becomes hard to get a hold of, hard to bite uh, it, it, you know, we like to get, uh, I think what Holy Spirit does, he gives us this stuff in, in uh, measured bites so we can ingest it. Uh, he doesn't make it difficult for us. We make it difficult, but it's really not. You know, it's like, uh, it's like healing. Uh, thank God for healing. But, but a greater than healing is knowing that I was created whole. Okay, so I, I revert from seeking a healing back to a knowing that I am whole because that's how God made me. And so sometimes, Apostle, there's a struggle in that process. It's like being one with God. Okay, I'm one with God. And, you know, that's a really neat say, saying people think. But to actually be united with God. To be the same mm -hmm. as God, created in the same mind, the same being is an amazing concept. And like we've already said today, that once you begin to see yourself in the same way as him, 
something to be held on to to be equal. But that idea of equality with God, that's where true intimacy takes place. So I am so grateful for where I am today. Uh, but here's the thing, Apostle. I've been a part of the Pentecostal movement. I've been a part of the word movement, the, the charismatic movement, the word of faith movement, the kingdom movement, the grace movement. And what I've learned about these movements is never to set up a tent and camp out there. I've learned to never build a house and stay there because revelation is constantly evolving. So even in my revelation, I don't plan on setting up a tent and staying there because we're moving on to greater things until the whole process is complete, until Christ be formed in you. I think it ought to say be fully formed in you. When he's fully formed in your awareness, that's when it's saying, you know what, now we're going to set up house. Amen. Yeah, it's like like a staircase. We we just keep climbing, and yeah. Revel, yeah, we're just going higher. But he said, Isaiah said, "Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace," and uh -huh. I believe uh, that is shalom. I believe which is prosperity, uh, in 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 its full meaning, not just you know cars and houses, but and health. It means health and all that. Whose yeah. mind is stayed on thee. I, I think that's that, that's so valuable for us. Um, the more we practice this, the more we, we put this teaching, what the Lord is revealing to us in front of us, the more we begin to, to experience it. It becomes more real because it, if, it, it'll become a meditation. I, I heard somebody teaching about habits. And uh, they basically said, if you want to change an old habit, replace it with a new one. Habits are formed basically in a 30-day period of time. You can, you can start uh, going in a direction and applying certain principles, uh, such as these things, the truth the Lord is bringing to our knowledge now. Uh, mm -hmm. it, you apply that not out of works, but out of love and desire to know him. Because that ain't what it is. It ain't self-effort. This thing is easy to do. But after about 30 days, you'll notice a great change. Because uh, your mind will just start saying, yeah. You know, I heard that. I heard that again. I heard that again. Uh, and, and it becomes so re real in you that it, it becomes a, 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 an image. Your imagination God given by the way imagination. They say, "Oh, don't use your imagination. Quit, quit just dreaming and doing all that stuff. You know, you'll never make no, uh, you'll never amount to nothing." No, God wants you to take the God given imagination that's in you and form an image of what He thinks about you. So that's formed through information that we put in front of us. That's good information, and we allow that to keep coming in until all of a sudden those things become so automatic you don't you don't even you don't have to stop to try to think about it it's just there all the time and that's yeah. what's that's what's happening with me more and more um i i just know i mean i can tell you right now i know and i do have goosebumps now i don't live by my goosebumps or right. the, the tangible presence of god because he does that all the time with me uh, he just does, and that's that 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 happens with intimacy. Into right. him you see, into him you see. Intimacy is going to produce feelings, but you, you, even if you're not being intimate that way, uh, you still have the relationship. But the more intimate we get, the more the experience grows in our life, and the the more the reality of what he said about us takes over all that stuff. I, I've had people say negative things about things now, and I just say, more and more, I said, no, that ain't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I don't agree yeah. with that. I don't agree, with, I agree with what, what my daddy said about me, and I know what he said about me. That's how it, it processes with me anyway. Amen, amen. <laughs> We're transformed into the same image and that really does translate to say transformed into the same mind yes the same mindset 
And that's just something you have to come to know. And if it takes time, it takes time. This process for me, although I've been in ministry 47 years, uh, really a good 35 years or so, uh, this process has been going from one level to another level. And I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the ride. Amen. And I think you have to come to the place that you enjoy it. Uh, otherwise, it becomes a, a great deal of frustration to you. So, well, uh, we're going to come back next week and talk about more uh, concerning developing the mind of Christ within you. Uh, we'll get some new scriptures, some new thoughts, some new uh, uh, concepts to share with you. And I want to say today that everybody in the chat room is uh, great comments, great thoughts. A wonderful conversation. Apostle Daniel Williams, thank you so much for being on the show with me this morning and uh, doing this series for three weeks with me. We're going to come back next week and talk about more of this, and I'm looking forward to it. Amen, Bishop. It's, a, it's an honor and a privilege because I know what's going on now, and the revelation will continue to grow but I know this is what's on the cutting edge, and, and I've said it this way. Maybe others say it the same way. I believe we've got our finger on the pulse beat of the Father. You know, mm -hmm. we, can, we, we got our finger on that, and, uh, and he is going to show himself so alive and so real in us, and our whole mindsets are going to wrap around what he said about us, and all the other stuff is just going to fall off the more, the more we're established. Um, and I'll try to remember that next time, established in right standing with him. Oppression and fear and terror will just fall by the wayside. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, keep that in mind for next time. Let's let's do that. Let's come back to some more scriptures. And uh, I enjoyed you being on today. I think when we go off because you're on your phone, it's going to, to kick you out. But um, uh, I really enjoyed today's conversation. Thank you. Amen. I, yeah. I, I did likewise very much. Praise the Lord. And, and I, I liked those uh, 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 fractures. Uh, soul fractures. That was a great concept. I uh, actually posted into him, you see, intimacy. Uh, very good. And uh, let's come back to this next time and uh, talk some more about developing the mind of Christ within you. Hey, everybody, have a great day. Um, if it's morning where you're at, um, just before noon, then uh, enjoy your day. If it's uh, night for you and you're about to end this day, then have a great evening and a great night. And we'll see you next week. This is our last show for the week unless we do a, uh, a random teaching on Sunday. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, have a great time. And we'll see you next time. I just want to say real quickly, if you're interested in BeLive.TV as a webinar uh, format to give you a professional presentation, uh, they are offering you to celebrate the one year I've been with them, offering you uh, a free 30-day trial uh, to use their system to make a decision during that time. So thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.